Rhabdomyolysis is a medical condition characterized by the breakdown of skeletal muscle tissue, leading to the release of muscle cell contents into the bloodstream. This release can cause significant health issues, including kidney damage. We're going to discuss an overview of the etiology, pathophysiology, diagnosis and treatment of rhabdomyolysis. So rhabdomyolysis can result from various factors and conditions, including trauma, so direct injuries like crush injuries, severe burns, or accidents that damage muscle tissue. It can also be caused by excessive exercise, so intense physical activity, especially in untrained individuals, or overexertion without proper hydration. Rhabdomyolysis can also occur from muscle ischemia, which is a condition that reduces blood flow to the muscles, such as compartment syndrome. It could also be caused by medications, so some medications such as statins, which are used to lower cholesterol, can trigger rhabdomyolysis in susceptible individuals. It can also be caused by certain infections, so certain infections, particularly viral infections like influenza or bacterial infections, can lead to muscle damage. Rhabdomyolysis can also be caused by electrolyte imbalances, so abnormal levels of electrolytes like potassium or calcium can contribute to muscle cell breakdown. Another cause for rhabdomyolysis can be toxins and substance abuse, so ingesting or injecting toxic substances, including alcohol or illicit drugs, can cause rhabdomyolysis. Some people also have a genetic predisposition to rhabdomyolysis. They may have rare genetic disorders such as McArdle disease or myoadenylate deaminase deficiency, and these can increase the risk of rhabdomyolysis. In terms of the pathophysiology, the breakdown of muscle tissue in rhabdomyolysis leads to the release of intracellular contents into the bloodstream, and this can include myoglobin. So myoglobin is a protein found in muscle cells. Elevated levels of myoglobin in the bloodstream can damage the kidneys leading to acute kidney injury. Creatine kinase, which is an enzyme found in muscle cells, these levels are significantly elevated in rhabdomyolysis. There can also be high levels of potassium, and we call this hyperkalemia, and this can result from the release of intracellular potassium, which can lead to cardiac arrhythmias. Other muscle cell contents, so substances like lactate, dehydrogenase, aldolase, and electrolytes may also be released into the bloodstream. Rhabdomyolysis is typically diagnosed based on a combination of clinical symptoms and lab tests, which include a clinical evaluation, so symptoms such as muscle pain, weakness, dark urine due to the myoglobin in the urine, this is called myoglobinuria, and certain swellings may raise suspicion of rhabdomyolysis. A blood test can be taken, so elevated levels of creatine kinase, myoglobin and potassium in the blood are key indicators. A urine test can be done, so myoglobin in the urine, we call this myoglobinuria, is often present and this can cause the urine to appear dark or reddish brown. Electrolytes can be analysed, so an assessment of electrolyte imbalances, particularly potassium levels. And we can also do some imaging like ultrasound or MRI to evaluate any muscle damage and any underlying causes. So in terms of treatment, there is a few things which need to be done to manage rhabdomyolysis, and this involves addressing the underlying cause and preventing further complications. The first is hydration, so intravenous fluids are administrated to help flush myoglobin and other toxins out of the kidney and prevent dehydration. Electrolyte management is important, so correcting these imbalances, particularly the hyperkalemia to prevent cardiac complications. And we need to treat the underlying cause, so addressing the condition or factor that triggered the rhabdomyolysis, such as discontinuing any causative medications or treating any infections. Pain management is key as well, so pain relief medications can be administered to help manage muscle pain and any discomfort. And further monitoring is usually needed, so monitoring of kidney function, electrolytes and other vital parameters is crucial to detect and manage complications like acute kidney injury. So in severe cases, rhabdomyolysis can lead to life-threatening complications, so early diagnosis and treatment are essential for a favourable outcome. The approach to treatment is individualised based on the patient's specific condition and underlying causes. 
So we've made it to the end of the video. If you've made it all the way to the end, leave a 100 emoji. If you have any questions about rhabdomyolysis, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.